What's the word, y'all? Has Giannis somehow become underrated? It's the question for today. And I know that sounds wild because he's widely considered one of the three best players on the planet. But part of me still believes that he's underrated. Welcome to the to the offseason where I'm just going to turn on the camera and ramble every once in a while about some basketball stuff. Uh, leave a like if you enjoy it. Now, if you ask the majority of NBA fans who's the best player on earth, they're going to say Nikola Jokic. I am one of those people. I firmly believe that Jokic is the best player on on this planet. But the title of best player in the league or best player on earth is one of those ones that is always in flux. I mean, kind of. LeBron had it for maybe, maybe a decade, but for the most part, it is in flux post the LeBron James best player in the world thing. We saw Steph Curry get some conversation for best player in the world. We saw Kawhi Leonard get some conversation. Again, we're talking about the finals run. That was ridiculous. We saw him get some conversation of best player in the world. Kevin Durant had his little bit of time. Then Giannis had it for a few years, and now it is Nikola Jokic. But after the playoff run, I'm sure there are some fans that are going to say, no, it's, it's Luka Doncic. And that's part of the conversation. Because to become the best player in the league or the best player in the world, it's not strictly based on your skill, right? It, it has a lot to do with a lot of different things. Again, skill plays a huge, huge part. You have to be able to do the thing th that you're paid to do. You got to be one of the best at, at basketball. But you also need some success in the postseason. Again, if you ask people the best three players in basketball, they're going to say Jokic, Luka, and Giannis in some order. Joel Embiid is not typically in that top three. And it's not because he doesn't have the talent to compete with those three dudes. It's because he hasn't had the postseason success. Where Jokic, we saw him win a championship last year. Giannis, we saw him win a championship a few years before that. If not, was that the year before that? Two years before that. And then we just saw Luka Doncic get to the NBA Finals and lose. But they have had that postseason success where they are, they are guys that get to the postseason and raise their level of play. And that's one of the reasons why Joel Embiid is not literally in that conversation. So it takes a lot of things. So Giannis... Before this, this new era of Nikola Jokic being the best player in the world was widely considered the guy. He was having success in the playoffs, obviously having a ridiculous closeout game on the highest stage matters a ton, where he can drop 50 in a closeout game and then shoot 90-something percent from the free throw line as a career, what, 60%? I don't even know what the career stats are. Career 65% free throw shooter, and in a closeout game, he shot 90-something percent. Like, that's insane. But since the ring in 2021... The success for the Milwaukee Bucks in the postseason hasn't been as high. And because of that, he has kind of fallen. Because I don't think Giannis is any worse today than he was in 2021 when he was widely considered the best player in the world. If anything, if anything, maybe his defensive impact has dropped 6%. But he's still one of the best players in the world. But he has fallen from the best player in the world while, because Jokic has overtaken it. He has risen instead of Giannis going down. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of that is because of the postseason success or lack thereof for Giannis in the Bucks since the 2021 NBA championship. In 2022, they win a first round series against the Chicago Bulls where there was, there, <laughs> there was no um, resistance in that series. It was five. It went five. The Bulls got one. But then they get to the next round and they go against the Boston Celtics. And that goes all the way to seven. But... There's no Chris Middleton. And obviously, we, we can see from the finals appearance and, and years before that, that Chris Middleton is one of those dudes for the Milwaukee Bucks that him being there, even if it is 70% of him, is extremely, extremely important for the team's success. And that's not negating the success that the Celtics had in this season um, or taking anything away from it. But when you lose in the playoffs in the second round, th the conversations kind of shift. And I don't remember it. I'm going to look up what Giannis averaged in that series. He averaged 34-15 and seven. 34, 15, and seven. And in this, his second best player, Drew Holiday, his averages were 21, six, and six on 36% from the field, 30% from three. So overall, it just wasn't the, the supporting cast that Giannis really needed. And then we get to 2023, and everybody remembers the legendary run that the Miami Heat went on, where they went against the Milwaukee Bucks in that first round, and they, they beat them in five. As a play-in team to beat the number one seed in five, like even though Giannis only played three of those games, they lost all three, even though he only played three of those games, that takes a little bit away from his overall ranking. It's rare that we see a one seed fall to an eight, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the injuries that may have been in place. And then that leads us to this postseason where he did not play at all. So Giannis has had the last couple years of him dealing with a bunch of injuries 
or his counterparts, his his co-stars dealing with a bunch of injuries, so he has fallen off of the top player in the world or really in the general conversation. It, <laughs> but man, that guy is ridiculous. Now, you know, it's Giannis is such a, a unique player. Um, and even Shaquille O'Neal said this, that if there's anybody in the current basketball that reminds him of himself is Giannis because he is all force all the time. Where when you talk about Giannis being in the conversation with best player in the world still, if you're talking on Twitter, you're going to get this one clip. And this subjectively is a funny clip. Blake Griffin was on his last leg in the NBA and Giannis is trying to break him down and he, he can't. Where's the bag? How can you be the best in the world if you got no bag? Um, I, I just think it's a funny clip, objectively. But... Obviously, that doesn't tell the story of Giannis. This season, Giannis finished fourth in MVP, and he averaged 30, 11, six and a half, and had his most efficient season of his career. 30, 11, and six and a half, and had his most efficient season of his career, and wasn't even really in the conversations. He was the odd man. He was the odd man. It was... Jokic, it was Luka, and it was Shea as the top three for most people. And he was the odd man out. And that's just, that's insane. And I'm not saying that the voters are wrong in that, but it's just showing that, like, what Giannis has been doing over the last couple seasons, we've just become accustomed to that it doesn't even pop anymore because he's been doing it since 2018. 30, 11, six and a half. That's... And, and one of my predictions for the season, because I've been trying to put together this thing of like, I don't even call them bold predictions, but like just predictions in general. One of my predictions that Giannis is going to reincorporate himself in that real conversation for best player in the world, because the offseason from the Bucks went from one that I did not like to over the last week or so. I'm looking at like, oh, considering the circumstances, not that bad, right? We think about all the teams around them got a lot better. The 76ers got better. The, the Boston Celtics they get better, but they're the same exact team, which as a team that won the championship. The Knicks got better. Donovan Mitchell resigned, which is a, a huge thing. But like those, those top teams in the Eastern Conference feel like they got better or just did the right thing and bringing back the continuity thing. And the Bucks were like, what do we do now? We had a, like this, this timeline for the Bucks season is insane. They bring in Adrian Griffin and they just have no chemistry. Nobody respects the coach and staff. And he ends up being, what, 30 and 11 when he ends up getting fired. They bring in Doc Rivers, which is a questionable call in, in itself, considering uh, Doc's track record come postseason. But objectively, a, a floor raiser, a floor raiser compared to, to Adrian Griffin and the guy that has a lot of respect amongst the players in the Bucks locker room. And we see things kind of shift for the Bucks once... Doc Rivers gets there where the transition defense went from one of the worst in the leagues to being decent. And that was one of the main problems with the Bucs. So, so like there are some things with the coaching change that you could look at and say, hey, now that we have a full offseason of them working together, it should be it should be better. Now that we have a full offseason of Dame and, and Giannis, their two man game should be better. Because I remember uh, Doc Rivers was talking on someone's podcast and he was talking about how Damian Lillard basically didn't work out at all in last offseason because he was so afraid to get injured before getting traded. I'm assuming that he's been working out again. I mean, it's a lot of... If there's any singular person with a bunch of pressure on him this season, it's Damian Lillard. And he's the type of player that I think he's going to take that pressure and turn it into success. But the coaching staff new offseason, Damian Giannis new offseason, and uh, Chris Middleton is going to get his ankles procedure it on both of his ankles just don't make sense to me um but but still they should be better and there were so many rumors about the bucks trying to package bobby portis and pat Connaughton to make some changes so many rumors about them wanting to play defense different than the brooke lopez drop coverage so maybe brooke lopez is on the move and none of that has materialized in the trade i just feel like those guys don't have a, as much trade value as they believe especially with brick brooke being uh almost almost 40 um, so they didn't have a ton of wiggle room when it comes to making their team better. But I could argue that all three of the pickups they got on vet minimums are going to be better than some of the people that they were playing last season. And some of this was because of injury. But in the postseason this season, Gallinari played minutes. Jay Crowder played minutes. Pat Connaughton, who fell off and maybe he can get back better, played minutes. Where they got to that second unit and it's like, man... Can, can Derry Bird hit six threes for us so we can stay in this game? And now they brought in some dudes that are just objectively better. Like Gary Trent Jr.'s market being a minimum contract is insane to me because he's a good NBA player. He's not the same defender that he might have been two, three years ago, but maybe being in a situation on a competing team, he can get back to that because at one point in time, the dude was in the passing lanes like crazy, leading the league in steals and a, a guy that can catch and shoot at 40%, but also move the ball if the open shot is not there. That's an upgrade. Malik Beasley and him offensively, 
can both shoot the ball very well, but I don't count on Malik Beasley to make the extra pass as much as I do with Gary Trent Jr. So that's a that's a huge upgrade. Now, maybe not a huge upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. Torian Prince, last year on the Lakers, he was kind of expected to be way more than what he actually is. And I think on the Bucs, they, they wouldn't have that level of expectation. So I feel like he'll just be, even if he provides the exact same amount of presence and the exact same amount of productivity, that's an upgrade for the Milwaukee Bucks. Torian Prince last year was asked to start. They're not asking him to start anymore, but he still was a 39% three-point shooter. I mean, his defense is not as good as once upon a time. But again, another 39 to 40% three-point shooter. And lastly, you have DeLon Wright. And throughout DeLon Wright's career, his shot has gone like this. And hopefully you get one of those good shooting years. But another guy, passing lanes like crazy, good defender, and, and just a better backup to Damian Lillard. So I don't know if I, I'm talking myself to thinking that the Bucs can compete with the Boston Celtics for the Eastern Conference or compete with some of the other teams for the Eastern Conference. But all I know is that I miss watching Giannis hoop, and luckily he, his team in Greece qualified for the Olympics, so we'll get to see him at least a little bit. And I think that he has went from a player that that just maybe a little bit slightly underrated to the general public. Maybe I was tripping. Maybe I said nothing in this video. Regardless, let me know what you think.